Born 2001 in Anaheim, California, LaMelo Ball is the third son of the notorious LeVar Ball. LaMelo Ball is the most famous player in this year's NBA draft. The notoriety will be made clear later on in the video, but what carries along from now to LaVar's moments on television is his intensity. Here, hold the ball because you ain't used to it. The Ball father had a short stint in the professional sports world himself and was determined that all three of his sons would get theirs as well. The whole NBA is talking about LaMelo Ball right now. His basketball IQ, his feel. His right from the get-go, LaMelo was training with his two older brothers. Day in and day out, the three would be playing on their home court or doing drills in the gym. Lonzo would be the first to start garnering national attention and highlight reels. But next thing you know, middle school LaMelo is playing with the high school team and his brothers, and it blew up. The three brothers out in Chino Hills caught the world by storm with their highlights. Lonzo the playmaker, Leangelo the scorer, and LaMelo the tiny young ball scoring at will. These highlights set off a completely new trajectory for the family. Eventually, Lonzo would head to UCLA. Hi, Lonzo. Head ball swishes through the three and Melo would score 92 points in a single game back in Chino Hills. But who was the man that got behind the flames of the Ball family fire and started fanning? LeVar Ball. He saw the possibilities of what this could turn into and ran with it. Thus, the Big Baller brand was formed in 2016 and all bets were off. LeVar was getting in front of any camera that would have him and hyping up the new basketball wear company and how amazing his sons were. Meanwhile, LaMelo Ball is just trying to finish his freshman year of high school. A 14-year-old kid with the world at his fingertips is a dangerous thing. In just a year, he had his own signature shoe with BBB. Everything was starting to rise way too quickly and something finally broke. Leangelo Ball was spending his summer getting ready to play at UCLA when the team took a trip to China. Jello was out in the city of Hangzhou and stole jewelry from a store with some teammates. He was contained and released shortly after, but the damage was done and UCLA dropped the middle ball brother. So with no university, but still needing somewhere to play, LeVar decided it was time his son played overseas. And you know what? LaMelo, you may be a 16-year-old high school kid, but LeVar thinks it will be good for your pro career and the brand, so you go to Europe. Melo became the youngest American player ever to go play overseas basketball as they headed to Lithuania. Now this is where things get tough for LaMelo. It's a completely different style of basketball over in Europe. Not only a different style, but things weren't catered to his family name anymore. They were hailed as celebrities when they first landed in the country, but LeVar had little power over coaches like he did at Chino Hills. Lithuania's coach frequently grew tired of the Ball brothers' antics and their thoughts that they were the best players, even if they played poorly. But what can you expect? LaMelo was a young teen forced to play with grown men who spoke a completely different language and couldn't care less that he was famous online. It would last less than a season, and they were out. It made complete sense. That was way too much for a kid to handle. LaMelo now describes his time in Lithuania as benefiting him in the long run, teaching him the grit it takes to play in the pros, and giving him the confidence that he can go anywhere. But at that moment, he just wanted to finish his senior year of high school in America with the other kids. And LaVar was fuming with the lack of playing time given to LaMelo. Besides that, LaVar also thought it would help the brand get back into the spotlight if Melo played back in the States. There are a lot of different opinions about LaVar Ball, but it seems to be a running theme throughout the years of LaMelo's adolescence. Things that were good for the big baller brand always seemed to coincide with what was good for the young hooper. LaMelo went to Spire Academy in Ohio to play his senior season. By the time he arrived back in the U.S., though, his prospect resume had collapsed. Whether it was because of all the reality TV cameras following him or his play overseas, Melo was no five-star level recruit like his oldest brother Lonzo. So, after a season dominating Inspire, where did the young point guard go? Obviously the best spot, the new amateur league his dad literally just started, the Junior Basketball Association. Seriously? LaMelo was basically a traveling hooper before he was even old enough to vote. So the JBA was started with eight teams around the country. And surprise, surprise, Leangelo and LaMelo's team won the championship and had the entire offense run through them every night. By this point, it was easy to get a skewed vision of Melo. His highlights were still exciting and his stats eye-popping, but it was always surrounded by the cloud of BBB and LeVar. Having a dad that is so extra that he's going on ESPN and talking to Stephen A. Smith about how he could beat Michael Jordan one-on-one, -on -one, that was a death sentence for LaMelo in terms of internet hate. 
Overrated was a tagline frequently dropped on LaMelo then, as it seemed he was always excelling, but with weak competition and on teams built specifically for him. After leaving Lithuania early, he also picked up taglines of lazy and arrogant. The 18-year-old point guard was public enemy hooper number one. The JBA stopped after a single season, most likely because LaMelo was headed off again overseas, this time to New South Wales in Australia. Set to try international pros again, the Illawarra Hawks would become LaMelo's revival. With both age and experience, Experience on his side now, Melo averaged 17 points, 8 rebounds, and 7 assists against the grown men now. He was not lazy. He was not arrogant. He was becoming a professional. After 12 games though, he would get injured. And in an effort to rehab and get ready for the NBA draft, he came back to the States. Naturally, still in a very big baller way, without telling anyone. Both players and coaches had no idea Ball had left the team, let alone the country. Maybe that goes against the professional idea, but he still won the league's rookie of the year. So how upset were they really? LaMelo's stock had finally regained its power after Australia. He wasn't talked about as a maybe for the league. He was talked like he should be the number one overall pick. No more Mr. Overrated, he was Mr. Top Rated. He ended up going third overall to the Charlotte Hornets, where he would again light a league up. His NBA rookie season had dazzling passes, lights out shooting, and a type of fantastical feel that made you excited to watch each and every play. You would never know what the kid was gonna do, on or off the court. It's LaMelo's third professional league, and after a season with the Hornets, he's won the Rookie of the Year award in two of them. Now with the big baller brand dying down and LeVar Ball stepping away from the camera, LaMelo is free to shine all on his own. There are no more tweets about the overpriced big baller shoes, no more TV segments about if it's a sign he's not built for the NBA because he can't handle Lithuania at 16. He's turned it all around, becoming one of the NBA's brightest young stars. He also signed a deal with Puma and has his own signature shoe with the brand. Kids this time around can finally wear his shoes. This current season, LaMelo Ball is averaging just under 22 points and seven assists. As it stands, the Hornets are still trying to figure out how to build around the point guard from Chino Hills, but they'll get there. If anything is clear from LaMelo's story, it's that it doesn't matter where he is or who he's with, the kid star turned pro is gonna ball either way, with highlights a plentiful and fans staying on their toes for what could possibly happen next.